Garumba Gimby is a Australian indigenous game. So it was a popular activity at Barumba, which is now called Cherbourg. But Barumba is the name of the water hole that was near the Aboriginal settlement of the Waka Waka people. So in the early 20th century, Waka Waka men and children would play this game after work. So it was played for fun and some social interaction with friends, as well as a break from their work life. So Gimbi comes from the Waka Waka word for play. And as was mentioned earlier, Barumba was the name of the water hole where the game was played. The players begin by throwing up the ball into the air as straight as possible. The other players then try to catch the ball before it hits the ground. The person who catches the ball must then throw the ball up into the air again. Every so often, the thrower can nominate someone to attempt to catch the ball just by saying their name. If no one catches the ball or the ball is dropped, the thrower must then pick up the ball and then try to tag another player. So this can happen by either touching the ball to the player or throwing the ball underhand to another player. The person who is hit with the ball must then become the new thrower or has to attempt to make the next catch. As for equipment, um, an outdoor space is recommended or an area with high ceilings as you are trying to throw the ball as high as possible. And you also need groups of four to 10 people and a soft ball. So this can be a tennis ball or we use like a wiffle ball. So the ball just needs to be able to be thrown into the air and caught easily as well as it won't hurt if it's thrown at you. Some key aspects of Barumba Gimby that all players should know is that they should always keep their eyes up and be very aware of their surroundings. They should also move out of the way of the catcher and making sure that they're also calling for the ball if they're running towards it. If no catch is made, then you have to tag a player and you have to avoid being caught. This keeps the game fun and competitive. You should also make sure that everyone is getting involved. So call on the people who are sitting on the sidelines to make them run in and go and catch the ball. So here's a demonstration of how the game is played. So the players throw the ball up into the air, they catch it, and the game continues. Here the ball is dropped, so the player picks up the ball, runs after another player, tags him, and now that player continues the game. The movement skills utilized in this game are receiving skills, so when you're catching the ball, sending skills, throwing the ball up in the air and at players, accompanying skills, running with the ball, and agility, avoiding getting tagged and change of direction quickly to get the ball. As you could see in the videos, I was observing the game from just outside the perimeter of the play area. I was walking back and forth, making sure everyone was safe, the game was played correctly, and everyone was involved. There are many different variations of this game that can be played to either increase or decrease difficulty for the players. So decreasing difficulty, you can make the ball larger and softer, like playing with a beach ball, and you can increase difficulty by playing with two balls instead of one. So here you can see us playing with two dodgeballs instead of just the one smaller wiffle ball. And as you can see, it's a lot more challenging and you need a bit more body awareness. And then here you can also play the game by hitting the ball up into the air with a bat instead of just throwing it. So this again requires a lot more body awareness as well as some hand-eye coordination and some extra agility because you will need to <laughs> run a bit more to go and get the ball. On my ringette team, sometimes we start our warm up just with a little five to 10 minute game. So I decided to teach my teammates Barumba Gimby. So I had to adjust the game in order to make it suitable for a warm up for us. So we played with a ringette ring instead of a ball just for some extra hand eye coordination. And we were also moving and jogging the entire time, so no standing still. 
We also had to say our teammate's name every single time in order for them to catch the ring. And whenever we got tagged or dropped the ring, then we had to do five squats. Yes. 